<clears throat> good morning. Good morning. Like Captain Kangaroo used to say, except I don't have a big uh, keychain like he had. I love that old guy. Anyway, this is Blue Boy Brown. It is 10 o'clock in the morning, and uh, things are going well. Uh, it's raining cats and dogs down here in Florida, but uh, it has nothing to do, from what I can tell, with the tropical storm that's over in the western part of the Gulf of Mexico. Ah, I think it's in Mexico right now. So uh, that'll probably uh, wreak some havoc later on this week, but it's probably going to be in Texas or something like that. Or it'll it'll curve around and get northern Mexico. Uh, these are difficult things, but yeah, if you don't, you don't get uh, the uh, it's the variation in uh, the way the sun heats the land and the sea and all that other stuff that causes these things. And you can't have a, a living biosphere without hurricanes. Hurricanes blow seeds everywhere. It's uh, not a bad thing. Just stay out of its way. It's been going on for a long time. Well, yesterday, I, um, I'll i show you what I did yesterday. Let me get rid of this. And uh, yesterday, I did this. Had to do it in two sessions because I got really tired. I got way too early in the morning, but uh, yeah, it happens. By the time I got to uh, the later part of the uh, broadcast, I was... Uh, just feeling it. So I said, okay, I'm going to be back at eight o'clock. So I came back at eight o'clock in about an hour and a half. I was able to uh, do this, which uh, worked out pretty nice. And this is my next page, page 70. I'm almost midway in the book, almost midway. It's hard to believe. Started this in August of 2018, just with uh, sketches in my sketchbook and, uh, and I'm scripting all the blah, 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 blah that you have to do. And uh, now I've got this. I started uh, posting these things at blueboybrown.com in, um, what was it, uh, uh, January 1st. Yeah, January 1st. And, uh, um, boy, it's, uh, uh, now I'm, uh, got, I've been uh, live streaming this since May 4th, I think it was. Was it May 4th that I started streaming this? So it's been a, about a month I've been doing this. And um, I'm uh, uh, going to keep on doing it. Got a, no reason to stop. Got some cool stuff coming up. I'm, I've got a old friend who's going to be on. We're going to have a, a day completely devoted to his stuff because uh, my old buddy. Uh, if you've ever use digital means to create an image, especially in the comics and science fiction field. Uh, he invented it. He's the one who started it. And he's probably the best at it. <laughs> There's probably nobody better at making, uh, taking something digital and making it look like it was a full-blown, gorgeous masterpiece painting, which it is. So, um, We'll, uh, uh, when I get, um, I, I talked about it last night, but I'm not going to say any more until he responds. He already said, yeah, let's, how do you, how do we do this? So it's cool. I just want to, uh, solidify things because I've got an idea, you know, percolating in my head. And I think it would be really cool because there's nothing on the internet that, um, is like this. Nothing. Uh, this guy invented digital book illustration. Uh, and the way you do it in Photoshop and all that stuff, he invented it. And nobody had, except outside of his, uh, probably his classes at Tufts University, have seen him do this. So I'd like to get him to do it anyway. So let's uh, get on with this. You don't have to see my ugly face, and you can look at uh, what I'm doing here. I'm going to put this over on the side because I like to have it over on the side so I can make the colors, uh, I can make sure the colors are all uh, working together. So uh, this right here, what do I look at? This is my TIFF 
Layer one, layer two, layer three, background. What's going on here? Page 69. Oh, I am so dumb. There you are. Okay, but if you take away this, you get the pure color. So I just want to grab one of these colors. I just want to do old blue boy's hat. Okay. Get back my, okay, and this is what I have to do. In fact, something I forgot to do yesterday. I might as well do it now before I forget. Up here in my good old watercolor thing. I didn't put any watercolor texture, so I'm going to open up a recent that did do that. Guess I'll pay, uh, page 68 had it. For sure it did. If it didn't, well, <laughs> let me see. If it didn't, then I'll have to do that one, too. Uh, yeah, this has my... Yeah, that has my watercolor. So I just pick that. Then I'll copy it. And then I'll bring it into... This one, which I didn't do, and I'll paste that in place. And now it has the texture of uh, a watercolor page on it, which I like. And over here, a couple of things I haven't done is I haven't put my oh, I need to do this, I need to turn it into a CMYK file d d do 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 i didn't flatten it okay so now i'm gonna put a tonal image over this uh, okay i'll make the note a uh, mode is multiply not that color and it'll be that color there Well, <laughs> that color there. Okay. And then I'll put my water color in there. And I'll paste that in place. And I have a watercolor texture over it, which I like. Now, I'll block that sucker. I've got up here my border. Here huh, is the template that I'm using. And that's real important because you want it to match what your printer wants. This is my color layer. Above this is my shadow later layer. I might add a few more here. This is my come on tone layer. Okay, so I'm kind of set up. Yeah, I think I'm okay. And um, I don't think I, I did all the drawing that I want to do uh, already. Uh, this is all addition of pencil and everything. This is all pencil. You know, nothing here is uh, ink, as you can see. But closer, it has the qualities of pencil, but it also uh, some of the qualities of diluted ink, which I kind of like. I'm going to use ink. Might as well dilute a little bit. And so... Now I'm going to do what I always do, which is uh, use something that I stole from the classical approach to painting, and that is to put a tone on the canvas and then to wherever you want to create a, the lightest value, you just erase it in this one. And that enables you to have 
what will be eventually a full range of value, which is kind of what you want. That's something that I kind of learned. I didn't know it really learned from a, a from painting, but actually from printmaking, where you wanted a full range of value if you could get it. Especially if you're doing one of those really highly developed uh, etchings like uh, Rembrandt did in the 100 Gilder print, and things like that, which is like that and his three crosses are just so unbelievably good. And so that's who I'm, uh, that's who I'm homaging. You know, always, I'm always thinking about Rembrandt. He's just always sort of on my mind. How could you not? Everything you need to know about drawing is in his prints. Printmaking, uh, etching's not drawing. It is quite indirect. You draw into a ground with a needle and you don't see the effects except in your head. In your head, you've got the effects. You say, okay, this is what I want. And then you put it in the acid or you engrave it. Engraving is a little more direct. In engraving, you can uh, take ink and Vaseline jelly. And you can uh, put those two together. And then you can wipe it onto the, uh, apply it to the plate. And then you can wipe it off just with a rag. And you'll pretty get much you get an idea of what uh, the effect is going to be. You can't do that in etching. In etching, you got to take a proof. You got to stick it on the old etching press and uh, see what it looks like. And uh, some of the most gorgeous prints we'll ever see are Rembrandt doing that. It's his called States, where he figures out whether or not. This thing's going to work. The house is going to work. And the fact that he was so bad with money, and I have a affinity to uh, Rembrandt in that respect, uh, is a, a wonderful thing <laughs> for us because uh, he um, turned to rent making as a much better way of distributing his images and it became the most famous printmaker in all of Europe. Uh, and so we have hundreds of these absolutely stunning prints that he did because it was an awfully good way to make uh, a living. Uh, they don't take nearly as much time as a big painting and he I think he kind of fell out of favor for a while after the um, so-called night watch painting because he uh, he did this to uh, commemorate the uh, a visit by Marie de Medici and uh, he didn't feature everybody evenly a lot of people who just didn't like what he did and so that the fact that he just didn't handle money you know and i know how that's like you can either handle money and or you can make art so <laughs> for me that's the way it is uh, and so i just make art so let's increase that. This may not take long because it's just one panel. I'm able to get this done by the end of the day. And that is the end of my production that I want to do for the entire week. I've got my three pages. So what I would do if that's the case is like uh, Friday and Saturday, I'd uh, go into some pages that I think uh, need some work. And which is kind of, that's the way things are. Hard to do any type of art that doesn't need something 
done to it. You when you got it finished, say hey, that's good, and you uh, are working on something later on, and you develop something new and subtle, and you go back and look at that old piece of work, and you say, "Uh-oh, I better fix that. I better make that agree with my newer, better stuff." So I think that's what I'm going to be doing. Maybe Friday and Saturday and Sunday is rerun day. Take Sunday off. Let's see what happens on Saturday. And you see, I don't use flats, which uh, I just like to paint it. Let's get it as close to the experience of doing watercolor as I can. Do, 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 do. Uh, you going to fill right there? I want you to do that. Okay, good. That I did that. Okay, I've got Blue Boys. That was in tone. That was brilliant of me. <laughs> Gosh. Oh, well, that'll be all right, because I can uh, uh, let me see <laughs> okay let me see I, I'll, I'll do it this way there's always ways to fix these ridiculous things that i do you just simply go up here multiply and then you in this area put that tone where it was already Already there, multiply it. Make it a multiply thing and then get it down like that. Okay, that's not so bad. Yeah, I'll do it like that. Then I'll, um, then I'll, drop that layer down and it becomes the tone layer okay so now we're gonna be in a color layer and we'll put in some flesh tones at least it's flesh tones and uh, it'll be right here and I still have that on normal I'm losing my mind. Okay. Okay, I do this pink stuff. Try to add some other colors to it because nobody's actually pink unless you have no skin pigmentation, then you're pink. Otherwise, you're all types of other colors. No matter what. Ethnic group you're on, you don't, you're not just one solid comic book color. Nobody is. Okay.
Okay, now let's look at old Blue Boys. Uh, color of his slacks right there. Okay. And we'll just put that in there. It's not going to take too long. Okay, okay, get there. Once I put all the flat colors in, I'll start modulating some of these colors, making them a little more painterly the way you would if you're actually doing watercolor. You wouldn't just do flat little colors like this. You'd be playing around with the colors and adding little patches of complementary color. You'd be doing all that stuff. Because in the shadows of any color, the shadow takes upon itself the qualities of the complementary to that pure color, which is Impressionism 101. You look at some of Monet's, especially Monet's, Renoir's uh, uh, paintings, you'll notice this. That's pretty kind of cool. And they didn't get this just from their own observation of the world. They got this from uh, looking at, uh, uh, they were in contact with uh, scientists, physicists, who were studying the nature of color. And... Um, And they noticed this, and so uh, the Impressionists started using this in their work. Let me see if that works. Oh, it does sort of. Let's see how much it works. Put the screen over this. I may not want it to look like that, but we'll see. Huh. Let's try that in several different, uh, nope, overlay, eh, we'll see, soft light, nope, uh, hard light, maybe, maybe if I were to uh, decrease the op opacity, yeah, I might be able to do it like that, yep, okay. Yeah, it doesn't have to be exactly the same color as the uh, axe I put in the previous page. Uh, dee boop 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 boop. Okay, I'll just barely reintroduce the edge of that axe, the black line there, because I don't want it to just be obliterated. Well, it takes a lot of uh, small muscle finesse. Okay, that's no, 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 no. Not too bad.
Okay, like that. Bring this down like that. That ain't so bad. Now, back up to color. Now I want to, um, probably should do that. Want to get that gray. So a few places I'll use gray just as a combination black and white, which I don't like to do too much. So look at it, looking at it, it is actually 33% cyan, 24% magenta, and 23% uh, yellow, and there's no black in it. Yeah, I kind of thought I was cooking on all all my uh, cylinders last night. You can make a gray. Does that look like gray to you? Yeah, it looks like gray to me. There's no black in it. There's no black and white, make sure black and white. And so, strangely enough, it still has all its properties of interacting with color. It's a really cool thing. Uh, what did I do over here? <laughs> I used the shadow. I just waited for the shadow later on that. So I got that done. Now, let's do the ground. The ground. Okay. I'm going to use this color. I'll mix around with the color layer. Later. There are three people watching. I am so impressed. Cool. Stay watching. You'll learn something about color theory. I teach color theory in my art history classes. Because I in my art history classes, I do any dang thing I want to do. You can add, since I'm teaching them the language of art, you have to talk about color theory. Color is the most complex of all of the elements of art. Because it's not only a physical thing, pigment, but it is also the vibration of energy. And whatever vibration it is, is that color in the spectrum. And so um, to teach color, you have to teach that there are more than one set of primaries. There's the primaries of pigment red green and uh, red yellow and blue there's the primary colors of light red green and blue you can make a uh, yellow for mixing red and green in light and then there's the um, there's the primary colors of printing commercial printing which are cyan, magenta, and yellow. And then you add variations of black to it, which will give you a lot more colors. But the, the combinations of uh, primary colors in the uh, in commercial printing are wacky. They, the secondary colors of uh, in commercial printing are actually the primary colors in light. They're red, green, and blue. Red as we think of red. You mix uh, cyan and yellow, and you're going to get real You're going to get a, a real red. The red we think of when we think of red. Stop sign red. Yeah, it's coming out all right. I want these colors to be understated. I don't want them to be flying all over the place. They're taking on life all their own. Let me save this because... It's always a good idea to save.
yeah, I'm not doing this for a very long time today. Which maybe it's kind of good that this is not going to take a whole lot of time because I have to teach my class at 11:40 online. Everything's online now. Will be to at least the fall. We're hoping to be back face to face in the fall. We'll see. If we do it in the fall, we'll probably all be wearing masks. They're going to be pretty wild. We'll all be social dis socially distancing. I, we, I will continue for a while. And uh, I will not be accepting any hard copies for essays. And all tests will be on uh, probably on laptops. I can remind my students that they can get a laptop checked out to them today. One of the nice things about our college is that we make sure that every kid has a laptop. If they don't have a laptop, we'll let them have a laptop for that semester. We don't, we're a real proactive uh, college that understands that the only way out of poverty is education. There is no other way. Unless you just, you know, I guess you could start a, um, a roofing business or something like that, or a landscape architecture, something like that. But even though you need, you know, you, I guess you could have a, you can have a decent life as a, people make an incredible amount of money, uh, sending out crews to uh, cut lawns and shrubbery and stuff like that. But the best way to do, to uh, not only get out of poverty, but to get some idea of what's going on in the world is to get an education. Even though it's difficult for some people to get through college, Anyway, our, our uh, school is big on helping everybody who, who wants to get through college to get through college. And college isn't always just, you know, 100 years ago, college was about you know, the classics and stuff like that. Now it's, uh, it's uh, how can we get people into a job, a 21st century job, where they can change the lives of themselves and their family, which is a worthy thing for education to do. Along the way, you should uh, avail yourself of the classics, which is what I'm doing, mainly in my classes, which are humanities requirement. You have to have this. You have to take it. Everybody has to take it. You don't have to take my particular course. There are other ones that fulfill it. But uh, in this, I make sure that you understand the classical tradition. And I especially uh, like to introduce kids to Aristotle, who did not know how many teeth were in his wife's mouth, but he knew a lot about life. That's a little bit different than uh, counting the, and uh, categorizing natural things. That comes from understanding what life is about, which Aristotle seemed to have a pretty good idea what life was about. He gave the cornerstone of much of Western civilization's philosophy. And much of modern philosophy that has uh, jettisoned him is gobbledygook. most famous philosopher, at least probably influential philosopher of the 20th century, Wittgenstein, 
said he never read Aristotle. Oh, great. You never read Aristotle. Read right, super duper. Okay. Don't ask me to be impressed. <laughs> Do not ask me to say, oh, you are so wise. There's so many holes in your philosophy. Anyway. Okay, now we're here. At about an hour and 20 minutes, I'll stop. So I'm making a lot of progress for starting at 10. It's 10.36. Not bad. Might actually get this thing most of the way done. All I have to do is... Uh, load it into a illustrator and put in the word balloons of the dialogue. And there's not much in the, these three pages. So I'm going to have a whole lot to do. Okay, down here, what am I doing? Okay, let's uh, try this down here. La, 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 la. Okay, don't go up too much. It's almost like cubism down here. Maybe I'll try to make it like a, a cubist painting. Certainly got the earth tones set up. The muted colors of uh, analytic cubism are there. Okay, let's see what happens there. Okay, I'm sure I think it'll be that. Let's see if this works. Just put this ground color as uh, sort of like my mess around facets. Hmm. And then lay in a gray. I remember how to do that. Forty three. Forty two, okay. And then uh uh thirty four. Now let's uh, make that uh thirty nine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I can play around with that little chromatic gray, which is a little warm, I think. Mm. 
and being warm. And we're down closer to the bottom of the page where we naturally think of the closest things to the viewer are. That'll help with holding plane and da 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 da. La 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 la. I have to have a different type of gray in there also. <laughs> well, those two colors go together well. And being that it's a chromatic neutral, it interacts with that brown, which is not just red and black mixed together, which is kind of a dead color. It's sort of a tan. I can color over this with different variations on this chromatic neutral. You get all types of uh, different effects, I believe. But I want to kind of get it filled in now so I can play with that idea so i get rid of the this uh tonal area which is on another layer so it's not being obliterated i wonder why i'm having no technical problems huh. It's sort of like announcer's curse in golf. I better save. 
Yeah. Better save the minute that you say, why am I having no technical problems? That's when you start having them. That's when you shank your, uh, your tee shot. Okay. So we have that. And we have watercolor texture. I love it. I like digital watercolor. Dang. You can fix it without having to put uh, fake paper over it. They do have a new uh, thing where you can get paper in a bottle in watercolor, which is really cool. I haven't tried it yet. I may have some, but I just haven't gotten around to using it. I've been so busy the last couple of years on this particular project, which will take up the rest of my life. But that's good. I won't have to do those brain te teasers when I'm in my 70s. I'll just be working on this. Which is kind of typical of artists who uh, make art every day. Their brain is actively involved with all types of stuff. Uh, Bougereau, probably the greatest of all the academic artists who Cezanne and Degas considered to be the greatest artist of the 19th century. That's Degas and Cezanne said this. Wasn't me. He was doing his finest work in his 70s. Stuff that just blows your mind. How gorgeous these works were. He was in his 70s when he was doing it. He really didn't come into his own until he was into it, his 60s. Now, he, he was good before that. But um, in his uh, 70s, he really took off. He painted a lot like Leonardo uh, in his younger years. But in the end, when he's in his old age, it was, he was just in a, in a, in a class by himself. He just did the most gorgeous things. It was so excoriated by modernist art historians like Michael Freed. Uh, and, and of course, he was uh, Matisse's teacher. Matisse hated him. They excoriated this guy, said he was a, a, a shallow academic because he was so skillful and uh but his his uh, star is rising guy that i know on the internet he's just an internet acquaintance fred ross who started the art renewal center which is dedicated to uh academic art and all that other stuff of the 19th century um he used to buy Bougereaux for like 5,000 bucks. Now they're going for like two, three million dollars at auction. Good investment. Couldn't have, uh, at the time, you couldn't have uh, predicted something like this was going to happen, but sure did. You can't buy a Bougereau for those kind of cheap prices anymore. But he's doing his stuff, outrageous stuff in his old age. It uh, has a lot to do with the fact that he just never stopped working. As an artist, I'm going to keep on doing this stuff till I drop dead. Which is kind of cool about the uh, digital stuff. It does not take a whole lot of physical stamina to sit here and move a stylus around on a Wacom tablet. I'm not going to have to pick up uh, uh, canvases and move them around and everything like that. Which will keep me kind of, uh, it'll keep me sharp. If I'm anything like my old man, I'll get a little bit dotty in my 70s, but. That'll be mostly that uh, 
I probably shouldn't be driving a car. <laughs> but uh, when it comes to this stuff, I'll be okay. And uh, I should, in the next couple of weeks, get a Kickstarter campaign started. Let's get the first installment of Blue Boy, which will be a limited edition. As I see it right now, I'm going to put out a the first two to three chapters of this story as a limited edition comic. A very limited print run, and every one of them will be signed and numbered and that will be my introduction of blue boy brown into the big bad world of comics and it'll be my way of saying i am back because i haven't had a hard copy comic of mine come out since 1979. And so I've been just sitting around learning, becoming better at this. Though I really had no intention of ever coming back to comics for many years. It's just something hit me a couple of years ago as I was looking at some stories of mine and saying, hmm, I wonder if I could turn this into a comic book. And then I did this little drawing of Blue Boy and I showed it to, actually I showed it to Rick Barry and he loved it. And I said, well, let's see what I can do with this. Uh, this is what I'm doing. Okay. Lots of limited color here. And I'm not trying to just fill in like it was a coloring book. I'm using some of the uh, ideas I've got from just watercolor painting that I do. So once I get this first comic book out, it gets out into the world, then we'll see if I get that second one out. And I'll just do several issues of Blue Boy until I get the whole 148 to 152 pages done and out. And then I'll put out a deluxe edition of the entire graphic first graphic novel. And since there's nine of them, that's a lot of stuff that I have to do. And uh, over here, this over here, that could be that. Over here, na, 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 na. this too, la, 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 la. and some of this right over here. And this is all wood, 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 wood. Okay. Hmm. So we have this down here. I want to kind of get that covered up. That's kind of a large expanse of that. So now let's go get ourselves another chromatic neutral. So this one will be, uh, let's say, um, 49. This will be 54. This will be uh, 54. Okay. So let's uh, 
see what I can do to just give a slight variation in the application of that chromatic neutral. So it's not just the same old, same old. probably do this a few times. Yeah, I can do this a few times. D D D D D. I got to get his boots in there. Somebody remind me. Make sure that Blue Boy's boots are not white boots. He's not Nancy Sinatra. Was a music video from the 1960s, which we all remember and love. Does everybody love Nancy Sinatra? Everybody I knew. I don't know about you, but uh, every time I hear something stupid by Frank and Nancy, I almost cry. Because I think about the first time I told my wife I loved her, and she looked at me and says, you're crazy. <laughs> Took me a long time to convince her. <laughs> La 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 Why am I having a good time today? This is gonna work. I think we got about twenty-five minutes to go before I have to stop and I may actually get the whole dang thing done. Which would be really nice. Just to have a good day. Two good days. Because yesterday, even though I was feeling real poorly in the morning because I got up so early and had to resume at 8 o'clock at night, but I finished it up and it looked great. I had a wonderful day because Rick Berry responded to my proposal and said, how do you do it? And he's a super good guy. Super good guy, heart of gold kind of guy. That's coming together. I may not be a complete boo boo. As in the Yogi Bear, Yogi Bear show. You remember boo boo, don't you? Okay, now let's make this 65. 65. And make this uh, 70. And that works. La la la. I'm hearing this beep, beep, beep somewhere. What's going on? <laughs> well, I'm living in a semi smart home. Maybe something like that. I think 
this little strategy is working. Thank you, Cabo Lacasso <laughs> and George Brock. Yep. Pablo Picasso's ideas have always helped me. Though, um, let's go backward. I think I'm overdoing it. Uh, right there is okay. Right there is okay. Don't overdo it, Dave. Yep. Uh, bring it up a little bit like that. Okay, a little bit over here. Don't want to overdo this. It'll make it look like some kind of a a pattern that you don't want it to be. Don't want it to be just some pattern like a quilt to actually build space with this. Now a little bit up here. A little bit there, and then some down here at the bottom. That's what I'm going to be doing is using the shadow layer to um, make sure that nothing floats. Okay. Um, hey, what am I going to do with that? Probably need to take that, make a slightly, yeah, maybe like that. Uh, do that. And this is like the real careful stuff. You got to put exactly the amount of color on it without making it just a fill in between the lines kind of thing even though you're kind of filling in between the lines somewhere but you want to leave some white in there because that's one of the qualities of watercolor that's so cool is that you don't have white there is no white in watercolor there's just the paper so you got to be super careful which i don't have to be really there. Now that kind of works. Yeah. And this uh, will um, make that. And then uh, do, 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 do. Uh, maybe bring you down here get rid of my yeah get rid of that okay so <laughs> well let's just create a, a shadow Layer because I don't want to be doing this forever. I only have about 15 minutes left. So let's create a shadow layer. Uh, 65. 65. Uh, 55. What do we got here? Now it's probably a little too much. Let's bring it up here. Bring you up here. Or down here. Get rid of that, but that means I have to have about 50, 50. I'm gonna put 60 here and see what I get. 
uh, I'm going to put 65. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll put a, how about 65 here also. No, that's green. I don't want a green. How about 55? And then this will be 55. And we'll get a fairly decent looking shadow color, which I can modify. <laughs> Once again, I'm a normal. I can uh, modify that if I have to. And I'm going to increase the size of my brush so it kind of like I'm slopping it around with a mop brush. Okay. Okay. And I'm probably going to want to have the main focus on old Blue Boy right here. That means I don't want to overdo some of this. Huh. Uh, yeah, take that out. Uh, well, um, I think that is too stark. Bring it up some. Get rid of that. Let's see what happens when I do that. Yeah, that's a little bit more like it. I can leave that. I can leave that. <laughs> okay, I like that one. Like that. That's okay. Now we're going to go down here, lay in some shadow, try not to overdo it. Yep. Like you do it with a mop brush. Big old, swirls, big old soft filbert jobs. And I'll lay it over his boots, which I'm colored yet, but uh, I'll get to that in a few minutes. Okay. Boo, 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 boo. Baba, doo, boo. Okay. And lay some of this straight over that.
I don't want that to become so like a hole there, so I have to play with that a bit. But I'm in the shadow layer, so I can erase certain things. Okay, now this tells me probably just a few places here and there. Just get rid of some of that. Uh, don't want it to just become this flatness. Okay, now I haven't even thought about the sky. So let's get some sky in here. over the color and see if I can get some sky in here. What was that? Oh, I see. Okay, rotary phone, you got, okay, you're off the rotary phone, Jag. Okay, now uh, back to color in the old sky, which we may leave this just as a muted color. I don't know. See what it looks like in a few minutes. Okay. Got about seven minutes to go. Yeah. Hopefully I can get this sky all done. I don't think I'm going to do much with the sky. I don't think it needs to be done because I've got Paul and Joby up there. And they need to be the main figures in that top part. And they don't need any competition. I've already got that black streak going across, which I kind of lack. And so I just gonna let that the computer catch up to my drawing, which will take a second or two. And fortunately, I don't have any place where I actually have to show the blood on uh, uh, Blue Boy's uh, shirt. Uh, this is just. The only hot, warm color is that axe handle, which works out pretty nice. It's the only place I want it to be. Come on, computer.
Well, well, well. Boy, I hope it doesn't take the whole seven minutes just to get this thing filled in. It might. <laughs> oh, well. Let me time to drink some coffee. I learned a long time ago, you do nice little short strokes doing this. You uh, actually get it done faster. But at least it's catching up to me now. Now I'm making shorter strokes. CPU has less to do now. Okay, now we're getting close to maybe the rotary phone will stop. There. Now let's uh, fill this in. I'll use the smoothing tool to clear that up. A little of that, a little bit of that. A little bit of that. Okay, now I need to make that give me a lighter variation on that. Oops. There, that'll do it. So that I can give this its proper place. Uh, that should probably be a more in the blue range. Yep. You know, mix it a bit with that brownish color, that beige is color, so that uh, I can always fix that later if I don't like it. Okay, now, smooth this. Don't make too big a marks because otherwise you'll have be waiting for years for the old CPU to catch up to me. Okay. Okay. Saving this. And this is what it looks like right now. So, can't be too unhappy. This is ex exactly what I wanted. Uh, maybe right that could even be white and it wouldn't bother me too much yeah it wouldn't bother me too much at all 
though I could, I guess, give it a yellowish thing right up here. Let's see if that works. Yeah, that works. And that's all I'm going to do to it. Oh, we got one down here too. That's all I'm going to do. Okay. Yep. I'm done. Save it again. I just did that. And this is it. Blue Boy Brown. Is that it? Yep, that's it. See you tomorrow. We are finished for the day, so I will see you tomorrow, 10 o'clock in the morning. Ta-ta.